What's up, everybody? I hope you're doing good. Beautiful night, very cold. We're suffering, eh? <laughs> this is crazy. I mean, I thought we were into summer already, you know, getting comfortable, short, and, you know, vest and stuff like that, showing off muscles. All of a sudden, it's freezing cold. This is crazy. It's insane. I hate it when it's cold. Thank you very much for stopping by. You are very much appreciated. Um, it's a big family, you know, and I like it when you're back. I like reading your comment. I'm learning so much from you two guys. So it's really, really very insightful. Um, this is your first time. Feel free to join us. Click on the button, subscribe. I'm sure you, you're going to like that. We're going to like each other. I'm sure. Yeah, we are the same people. It's always a great pleasure to have you. Um, let's watch this. Very interesting video from Naledi Pondo. Naledi Pondo is a South African politician, uh, Dr. Naledi Pondo, very intelligent, extremely brave woman. I uh, think many people can learn so much from her. Let's hear what she has to say. Uh, we're also looking at how we might, as South Africa, strengthen the security architecture within the Southern African Development Community, and of course, in the African Union. Let me explain what I mean. You know that today, we are seeing the bombardment of innocent Palestinian civilians who played no role in the Hamas attack of October 7th. Those innocent civilians have no protection whatsoever. It should be the responsible of the United Nations to ensure peace enforcement and protection of civilians. What the current calamity illustrates is that we don't have proper security architecture, which can, through leadership of AU or SADC or the United Nations, offer protection to ordinary civilians who have no role in a conflict and no, played no contribution in initiating it. So we believe that there needs to be very firm attention to the matter of security architecture within our region, at the continental level, and globally through the United Nations. We also believe that the United Nations should play a greater role in resourcing African Union-led uh, peace operations and also ensuring that there are higher levels of gender mainstreaming and gender responsiveness when we have AU and UN peace missions. We support the boosting of international partnerships, including ensuring that we have long-standing partnerships on the continent that support the ambitions of the African Union. We associate ourselves very, very directly with the Secretary General of the United Nations view that we should accelerate and scale up implementation of the 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development Goals. He has said that the holistic approach to implementation of all three pillars of sustainable development is required, and we support him fully in this global agenda. We believe that as developing countries, we will only achieve sustainable development if we have a massive scale up in provision of support from the richer countries of the world. We need the support in Africa, in the least developed countries on our continent and elsewhere, in landlocked countries, as well as in small island developments, developing uh, states. We know that domestic resources are insufficient for the key priorities within the sustainable develop, development goals. And it is important that we have support of finance, of technology transfer, and skills building in order to be able to address all the objectives of the SDGs. I also want to say one of the things that we need to do is that we must address the ending of the dependence of Africa. Africa is an extremely rich continent with a majority of poor people. 
Largely, the reason is we do not control our own resources. This inadequacy was clearly illustrated when we were confronted with the COVID-19 pandemic. We discovered in that crisis that the world is extremely selfish and that where the rich have a solution, they will utilize the solution for themselves first and will think about us at the end. A further area in which I believe we can uh, reduce our dependence as Africa is through implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, a very vital agreement and a flagship program of Agenda 2063 of the African Union. Currently, trade within our continent or intra-African trade is at around 16%, and we want to increase our share of world trade as Africa, which at the moment, in terms of products we send out, stands at around 3% of global export output. Totally inadequate figures. And we need to change this. In order to do so, we must achieve economic in integration. We must achieve industrialization on the continent. We must secure infrastructure development to ensure that the logistics are in place to secure our ability to trade more effectively. We've got to increase productive capacity on the continent, have stronger regional value chains, manufacture more effectively quality products, and create economies of scale. So the work we've done of South Africa's automotive sector, also utilizing Lesotho for part of the components for the cars produced in South Africa, builds a very positive value chain that we need to really draw on for increasing Africa's participation in the world automotive uh, sector. So I'm really thrilled that South Africa has taken the AFCFTA very seriously and that we commenced trading in January last year and that the majority of African states have now ratified the free trade agreement, which will vastly change Africa's landscape. Once implemented fully, the free trade area will connect 1.3 billion people with a combined GDP of around 3.3 billion US dollars. And all of us as entrepreneurs can benefit from that opportunity. As Africa, we have 650 million consumers today, and we will have a significant African middle class by 2030. So we really believe the AFCFTA has come at the right time, that this is Africa's time, and that the youth must take up all these opportunities and make good on them. So I say to young people that our international relations have been directed at enhancing diplomacy between South Africa and the rest of the African continent, but also strengthens our collaboration and development partnerships with countries of the North. As South Africa, we are not anyone's enemy. I always tell my foreign minister colleagues, we don't seek to make enemies of anyone. What we seek to create are opportunities for our country, our people, and for the continent. And where we see wrong, we will take a moral stand. So on the question of Palestine, we are clear. It is immoral what is happening to the Palestinian people. We will also take a stand on what is happening in Sudan, on what is happening in the Sahel, and several other African countries. South Africa must play a role equitably everywhere to ensure peace and development and to utilize our achievement of democracy to support the achievement of democracy and development in all parts of the world. So for us, when we talk international relations, we say a better South Africa, a better Africa, a better world. This is our commitment in international relations. Thank you very much. Thank you.